Have you ever forgotten something very important, like an appointment, a password, or the name of that friend from college? And I'm sure you've worried about losing your memory, haven't you? Neurological diseases such as dementia, Alzheimer's and Parkinson's are increasing exponentially. More than 55 million people are living with dementia today, and it's expected to reach less than 150 million people in 30 years. To give you an idea, someone is diagnosed with dementia every three seconds. What can we do to protect our brain health? What if I told you that something as simple as the position you sleep in could make all the difference? That's the topic of today's video. Sleeping position can change your life and protect your memory from dementia and neurological problems. People are becoming more sedentary, eating less well. There is chronic stress for everyone. People can find you at any time. The pace of life has accelerated. We're sleeping less and less. People throw a lot of neurotoxic substances to kill insects. They fall into the water. We inhale it or eat it in our food, and it can increase Parkinson's. Just to open a parenthesis here, the increase in Parkinson's is alarming, a silent pandemic. It's difficult, isn't it? We know the short and long-term effects on brain function, including memory loss, worsening attention, language, and communication problems. Reduced mental processing speed, difficulty making decisions, learning new things, and research shows that COVID ages the brain prematurely because information in the nervous system accelerates the process of dementia by firing up genes that were dormant. So if you've forgotten your cell phone or bank password. Dementia is a syndrome characterized by the loss of brain function. This loss of brain function, such as memory, language and reasoning, significantly impairs the ability to carry out everyday tasks. Alzheimer's disease is the most common cause of dementia, accounting for approximately 70% of cases, and dementia is a global public health problem. It demands attention and immediate action. It doesn't just affect the person, it affects the whole family, and it can be devastating and sad. I have a patient who was extremely intelligent, a teacher who argued with me on every subject, who is now a shadow of that person. Imagine the relatives who have to live with that every day. It's a lot of stress, suffering for the caregivers. The problem is that the drugs we have today are palliative. They can't really stop the disease. The brain continues to get worse over time. Two new drugs have come out in the US. They have given some hope, but they're very expensive. They cost a house a year. And with a certain risk of cerebral edema, but they manage to keep the disease at bay, we have to wait for the drugs to become cheaper. Because today they're unaffordable. There is a difference between normal memory loss and dementia. Forgetting where you left your keys is normal. We all have memory lapses from time to time, but when they become frequent, they become dementia. And they interfere with your daily life. They can be a sign of something more serious. Normal memory loss is occasional forgetfulness, names, dates, or recent events. Difficulty remembering where you put things, memory that improves with cues and reminders. Why does this happen? The main reason is distraction. When we're distracted, our brains aren't focused on storing new information. This can lead to frequent forgetfulness, but chronic stress can damage the hippocampus. If we don't pay enough attention to what we're learning, or if we don't connect it to other information we've already stored, memories become weaker and more likely to be forgotten. And when you forget the name of a college friend you haven't seen in 40 years, memories become less accessible over time. If they aren't used and reinforced, it's as if the path that leads to the memory is erased, weakened. Dementia, on the other hand, is a persistent and progressive loss of memory. The person has difficulty learning new things, but I'm going to open a parenthesis here. It's not impossible for them to learn new things, and it's also associated with changes in personality, behavior, and mood. Difficulty performing tasks that were once easy. Who hasn't forgotten where they parked their car? That's normal memory loss, but forgetting how to drive is dementia. 
forgetting the name of a friend you haven't seen in a while, normal memory loss, having trouble recognizing familiar people. That's dementia. It's important to remember that dementia is not a normal part of aging, so if you're worried about your memory loss or the memory of someone you know, don't be. See a doctor for a full assessment. This video is important for you to recognize, but it's good to see a specialist. Early diagnosis of dementia is important for the treatment and management of the disease, and there are many types of dementia. And look, most people who have age-related memory loss don't have dementia, and there are many things you can do to keep your brain healthy and reduce your risk of dementia. I'm going to ask you eight questions. Grab a pen and paper. Answer yes or no. First question. Do you eat a healthy diet of fruits, vegetables, legumes, and whole grains? Answer yes or no. If you answered no, you're new to the channel and trying to subscribe. Second question. Do you exercise regularly, at least 30 minutes a day? Yes or no. A sedentary lifestyle increases the risk of dementia. Three. Do you get good quality sleep, at least seven hours a night? Yes or no. Too little or too much sleep increases the risk of dementia. Four. Do you keep your mind active by reading, doing crossword puzzles, learning something new, even if it's on YouTube? Yes or no. Five. Do you manage stress with techniques such as meditation, yoga, breathing exercises, or even journaling? Yes or no. Six. Do you maintain an active social life with friends and family? Do you or do you not? Social isolation increases the risk of heart attack, stroke, and dementia. Seven. Do you have regular medical checkups to control conditions such as diabetes, hypertension, heart rhythm problems, cholesterol? Yes or no? Yes, this is very important. They all damage your brain. And eight. Do you avoid smoking and excessive alcohol consumption? Yes or no? Add up the answers. The more yeses, the better. The maximum score is eight. If you got eight, congratulations, top marks. But if you got five or less, you need to change your lifestyle and fast. Even if you're young, planting the right seeds will help you reap a healthier brain later. Can the way you sleep affect your brain? First, we need to explain the relationship between sleep and brain function. Why is sleep important to the brain? All animals sleep, and experiments have shown that depriving animals of sleep can be fatal within days or weeks. Sleep is something the brain does for itself and for the good of the brain. Until 2012, see how recent that is, we thought the brain cleaned up after itself. Theories were that brain cells recycled all their waste. In the rest of the body, we have the lymphatic system to help us to remove excess fluid, to prevent swelling, to fight infection, to filter out impurities, to clean out dead cells, bacteria and viruses. It's our garbage collector. But the brain doesn't seem to have this lymphatic system. Leader misleads us. When we sleep, we activate this cleaning system, the brain's waste system. And that's why it took so long to find it. There was no point in opening the body, no point in looking at it under a microscope. No one ever found it. This masked the existence of the lymphatic system. In the rest of the body, it's the lymphatic system. In the brain, it's the lymphatic system. With the advancement of brain imaging technology, such as functional magnetic resonance imaging, researchers were able to see how the brain works when it's asleep. And that's when the lymphatic system was discovered. Imagine tunnels filled with fluid around the blood vessels of the brain. With every heartbeat, the blood pressure pushes the fluid through these tunnels, cleaning the waste from the brain. So sleep is much more than rest. It activates the lymphatic system, which cleanses our brain. That's why it's so important to get a good night's sleep or other neurological diseases. When we're awake, these tunnels are deactivated, but 95% of the lymphatic flow is done when we're asleep, and without cleaning, it can interfere with communication between neurons and the accumulation of beta amyloid protein and such, which are hallmarks of Alzheimer's, and as I said, 70% of dementia is Alzheimer's. 
people who sleep less than seven hours a night have a higher risk of developing diseases like Alzheimer's. This may be because the lymphatic system doesn't have enough time to clean out the brain waste, accumulating beta amyloid protein and so on. Going further, as we get older, we sleep less and our arteries harden. This may explain the link between high blood pressure and dementia and between aging and dementia. Before I teach you how to sleep well, I want to inform you that I'm going to leave a link for you to click on in the comments below with our herbs and foods program with recipes that explain how to keep your organs healthier. This way you can prevent future health problems with homemade and natural recipes. There's even a tutorial that teaches you how to grow these herbs at home to improve the health of each of your organs. Take a look and then come back and tell our team what you think, okay? How do you keep your lymphatic system working well? Do you know how to sleep well? Then try to get at least seven hours of sleep a night. Keep your blood pressure under control. Exercise. Exercise can improve blood flow and lymphatic function. Studies in mice have shown that exercise increases lymphatic clearance and reduces the accumulation of proteins that damage nerve cells and sleep the right way. What's the right way? Is it on your stomach, on your stomach, on your back, on your side, and which side? What is the best sleeping position for better lymph flow to the brain? The best position is to sleep on your side. Better yet, on your right side. Let me explain. Sleeping position affects lymph flow. Mice sleep on their sides, which helps blood flow away from the brain. Research in humans has found that sleeping on your right side seems to be more efficient for this drainage because the right jugular vein, which is responsible for draining blood from the head, is more open in this position. And as I said, it's all related. People with neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's tend to sleep more on their backs, which can interfere with lymphatic drainage. And people without problems also tend to spend most of their time sleeping on their sides, especially on the right side. Research has found that about 72% of people with dementia spent at least two hours a night on their backs, compared to 37% of people with healthier brains, leading to the possibility that sleeping on your side may influence the elimination of proteins that are toxic to neurons. If you sleep more on your stomach or back, it would be interesting to train yourself to sleep on your side. But how do you train yourself to sleep on your side? One thing you could do is the tennis ball technique, where you can wear a shirt with a pocket, turn it inside out with the tennis ball in the pocket to prevent you from rolling onto your back. Of course, this research is still in its infancy and no definitive causal relationship has been established between the way we sleep and dementia or avoiding dementia. There is still a lot of research to be done on the glymphatic system and the relationship between sleep and neurodegenerative diseases. As I said, the glymphatic system was discovered in 2012. But since we have very few real things that we can do about dementia and neurodegenerative diseases in general, the glymphatic system can remove some of the alpha-synuclein that is associated with the disease. So anything is possible, especially if it's something harmless, no harm, no cost, and you can do it today. Remember that sleep is an investment in your brain health. Prioritize your sleep and keep your brain functioning at full capacity. Do you sleep on your side? Did you like the video? Remember to like and share it so more people have this knowledge. And if you've made it this far, I'll recommend another video of mine. Until the next video, thank you and stay healthy.